We even have governments outpacing the change. We have state and local governments outpacing change of the NCA because of how inept it is. What is up, everybody? It is Jake with Master Football back at it again. Happy Thursday. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to be up to date on everything college football, pro football, Madden, EA college football, NFL draft, anything related to American football, hit the red subscribe button. You will not be disappointed. Also, hit the like button, too. And if you're on Twitter, hit follow as well. Twitter fam is growing. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Oh my gosh, what happened to your boy? He got a big old shave job. He did. However, I want to talk about something not related to my facial hair situation, but I want to talk about the NCAA because, how do I say this? I feel like the NCAA is like, you know, have you ever had a family member that you really care about, but they just haven't really been applying themselves and they just been like, kind of like sitting by, letting life get ahead of them, really not really pushing for themselves or advocating for themselves in any way, doing anything really good for themselves, making incremental improvements of themselves, but not getting to where you want them to be. And again, that's the thing about potential is potential is it's weird because it's like unrealized, but it's like you could be this, but you're not doing it. That's what I have to say about the NCAA because the NCAA is slowly, slowly, slowly becoming more irrelevant. Now, the title of this video obviously is stating the fact that the NCAA is irrelevant, the NCAA is going away, but whatever the whole situation is there. A lot of you who are hardcore college football fans are like, yeah, okay, well, tell us what's new. But you can see by the, uh, the machinations and the movements behind the scenes here as to see how what the rest of the world sees by, be as the NCAA and what they're doing about it. Because the world's still moving. And again, these we even have governments outpacing the change. We have state and local governments outpacing change of the NCAA because of how inept it is. We have a couple articles to get through here, kind of to see where we're at because the NCAA, although trying some things occasion, on occasion they'll do some things. At the end of this video, I will make sure I give credit to where credit is due, what they have been doing. For the most part, the NCAA is just completely inept and irrelevant. So here we are on Twitter with Darren Heitner, and he's the founder of Heitner Legal. He teaches sports law at the University of Florida and NIL at Miami Law School. And he says here that New York, currently the state of New York's modification to its NIL law, which takes effect immediately, says the NCAA can't even open an investigation concerning the school from New York for involvement in an athlete's NIL deal. Now, a couple of schools here. I, mean, I think off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure that it's Army who's not really involved in on NL as much as Syracuse, and then it's Buffalo. Those are the three uh, college uh, FBS college football programs out there with the NAL. So he says, <laughs> I'm sure the NCAA is thrilled with this. Let's actually lead through some of the lingo here so we can see what the perspective is here. So it says uh, here, uh, D, an athletic association conference or other group or organization with authority over intercollegiate athletics, including but not limited to the NCAA, shall not and shall not authorize its member institutions to I. Prevent a college from participation in intercollegiate athletics because a student athlete in attendance has previously earned or intends to earn compensation for the use of his or her name, image, or likeness. 2. Entertain a complaint open an investigation or take any other adverse action against the college for engaging in activity protected in this section or involvement in a student athlete's name, image, and likeness, or three, penalize or prevent a college from participation in intercollegiate athletics because an individual or entity whose purpose includes supporting or benefiting the college or its athletic programs or student athlete violates the collegiate athletic association's rules or regulations with regard to a student athlete's name, image, and likeness. Basically what they are saying there is that the NCAA is gutless in relation to New York and its name, image, and likeness rules. So again, we're seeing this happen across the country here. And again, we come over here and see some of these comments here. And this guy right here says, uh, uh, all the states should I follow? Thoughts? And he says, Arkansas, Texas, Oklahoma, New York had the middle finger to the NCAA. Missouri likely to be next. I see more states following. And that when, from what I understand about local legislature is that for the most part, you'll see one state. They'll get their lawyers together. They'll create some sort of bill. They'll make sure that, okay, we've got here. We've got all the, the you know, we, we cover all of our bases, so on and so forth. They have all of that. And then what the next state does is they just say, hey, that's really cool. Uh, let's copy it. Add a couple tweaks here for our state. And we're good. That's basically what's going to happen here. So we see. Arkansas, Texas, Oklahoma, New York, Missouri, and more than likely most other states are going to be adding this down the road. The NCAA is being gutted from, first of all, the NCAA is being outmaneuvered by state governments. That's how inept and slow they are at this point. 
Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, oh, wait, hold on a second here. The NCAA, they, they gave us the ability to have NIL. They, they willingly came forward and gave us the ability to have NIL. It was their idea to do that. Actually, no, it wasn't. It was a lawsuit. It comes all the way over here to NCAA, the National Collegiate Athletic Association versus Austin. It was a United States Supreme Court case concerning the compensation of college athletes with the NCAA. It's, it followed the previous case, O'Bannon versus NCAA, the one that got rid of NCAA football 2014 in that franchise. RIP. But anyways, this one in connection with the other one, the reason why we have NIL wasn't because the NCAA saw the situation like, we're going to address this. We are going to save the day. No, it's because they were like, uh, we got sued. Now we have to do this. So that is where we're at. Now, again, there's certain things, the transfer portal here and there. There's certain things that might have happened, but the NCAA Athletic Association versus Austin uh, in a connection with the uh, uh, O'Bannon versus NCAA case, it's not like the NCAA came forward and did this voluntarily. They got sued, and so they had to. And a matter, as a matter of fact here, not only with the, the fact that NIL wasn't even their idea, the early expansion of the CFP wasn't either. So we come over here to collegefootballplayoff.com. And again, this is actually a really interesting thing to think of here. I'm going to talk about this in a second. The 12-team playoff is beginning in 2024-2025. For those of you who don't know, it's not this next season that's coming up, by the way. Next month, this is crazy. Next month, we have college football. We have professional, well, I mean, it's with well, NAL. Is it technically professional? I don't know. We have FBS, FCS. We have NFL football. We got preseason games. Football is coming next month, baby. Let's go. Continuing here, this was December 1st of 2022, this last December. College football playoff expands to 12 teams beginning in 2024. The members of the CFP board of managers have agreed to begin the newly expanded 12-team playoff during the 2024-2025 season. It was thought here, and it says right here, when the board expanded the playoff beginning in 2026 and asked the CFP management committee to examine the feasibility of starting the new format, the management com committee went right to work. More teams and more access mean more excitement for our fans, alumni, students, and student athletes, and more money too. Again, let's make sure we know here. My point is, we see the fact that the CFP management committee, as a part of the college football playoff, who has their own website, for God's sake, they voted. It was voted in the 2026. They moved it up to 2024 without the oversight of the NCAA. And you might be saying, oh, no, dude, they're definitely a part of the NCAA. They are the subsection of the NCAA. Totally right. Well, let's see what the NCAA has to say. And here we are in an article over here from 2016. The NCAA president doesn't run the college football playoff, but has a good 18 plan. Again, that's important here, but I want to come down here to this tweet. Did you know the NCAA, from the NCAA's Twitter account, did you know the NCAA does not run the CFP or bowl games aside from setting the playoff rules for, of those competitions? They set the rules, and then the CFP does their own thing. As again, we see this situation here with the early expansion from, or I won't say the early expansion, but I'll say moving up of the expansion of the playoff from 2026 to 2024. We also see the fact that, that again, that was done through the CFP. They're operating as, the, operating as their own entity. We see the fact that the NCAA only allows NIL because it lost in a lawsuit, and we're seeing now that a lot of those NIL rules aren't even being set by the NCAA itself. A whole bunch of state legislatures are like, uh, no, we're going to figure this out ourselves now, i want to make sure i give credit where credit is due and again as much as the situation is where the nca messes up 10 times they'll eventually get one or two things right and i know that some people will not like this rule i personally love this rule i like to universalize as much of, as, as much of the rules as possible i really didn't understand i mean there's a couple rules in college as an example you're allowed to go three yards downfield uh, on pass plays as a you know, offensive lineman whereas the nfl it's only one yard and again i can understand the fact that like you know that's the reason why a lot of these rpos are so heavy in college and there's so much more creative you know as opposed to like the nfl does a lot of three-step game lots of slants hitches fades outs things like that or you know bubble screens quick little passing game whereas in college I mean, the slow mesh out there for Wake Forest, they can run like deep routes in a con connection with, you know, uh, you know, run plays off of that. It's really crazy. But that's neither here nor here. I want to talk about this rule here because the NCAA has approved the rule to run the college football clock after first downs. And again, that is very important, just like the NFL. They did have the exception there that inside the two minute and can college two minute is crazy because the final the final two minutes of college. Uh, football are kind of like when, you know, when you, oh yeah, I'll be ready, honey, I'll be ready in two minutes. And it takes her 15 minutes, same situation with this here. So we see the fact that this right here, an adjustment here, some people don't like it. I personally love it. And again, it's more, 
it's going to better fit games into those three and a half hour slots. Whereas in the NFL, they have the, uh, you know, they have the 11 a.m. kickoff. I'm in mountain time. It's 11 a.m. And then it's 2.05, sometimes 2.15, 2.20, something like that. Some can go a little bit long there. But in college, they have the three and a half hour block. Again, their, their blocks on the East Coast are noon, 3.30, 7, and 10.30. And they have those. Now they're going to more adequately fit those games in those blocks. They're going to try and get rid of these four-hour games. There's a reason why they sped up the uh, the you know the Kansas City playoff. As a, now they just trade two-point conversions as opposed to having a full possession just to get the game kind of over, hurry things up. Also saw the fact that the NCAA approved a smaller rule. They said no consecutive timeouts. They said no untimed downs at the end of the first and third quarter. Again, small things here. But again, one thing here was this. Now, another thing that they did that doesn't necessarily help out conference realignment, but this is something that the NCAA has done. And again, all I'm saying here is the NCAA does do some things. I had a report about this last week where I basically said that the NCAA committee considers increasing the transition cost from FCS to FBS from $5,000 to $5 million. That's a 1,000 times increase. Now, I, again, I think that we're starting to see a little bit of, uh, a lot of people say, oh yeah, we're going to see a Power 5 breakaway, we're going to see a Power 2 break breakaway. We see the fact that even the NCAA sees there's a designation that's different between the FBS and everybody else. FCS schools are still D1 technically, but the FBS, they see that there, there's a certain power dynamic there that doesn't exist with the other levels of football. It's so completely different here. Now, will they be able to keep this ship afloat, whatever it is? I don't know. I do know that the CFP is stronger than the NCAA, the local state governments are stronger than the NCAA, um, the fact that the NCAA only really does something good if they get sued for it, I just don't really see what they do. They are basically irrelevant at this point. NIL wasn't the NCAA's idea, okay? The uh, early expansion of the CFP wasn't the NCAA's idea. The, uh, the fact that the local state legislatures are making up their own NCAA rules that willingly go over the NCAA's head it wasn't their idea. Again, all we've gotten from the NCAA recently was uh, more expensive to go from FCS to FBS and a running clock after first down. That's basically all that they do. How it moves in the future, what we're going to have, are we going to see the CFP take over college football? Are we going to see a, a Power 5 breakaway? Are we going to see a... FBS breakaway, are we going to see a power two breakaway? Whatever the situation is there, you can tell that the NCAA is not going to be consulted first because right now they're not even consulted anyway. All right, guys, get in the comments right now. Let me know what you guys think. And again, you guys tell me what you think is going to happen with the NCAA college football. More importantly, with the FBS in general. I think there is a, a grouping there that really matters. But again, I just what do you guys think is going to happen with them? Personally, I mean, they might just be irrelevant at this point. A, you know, a F FBS breakaway in terms of rules and regulations. Maybe not in terms of, you know, Title IX scholarships. Still make sure that you have the same amount of scholarships for men versus women. Totally get that. But what's going to happen? You guys get in the comments right now and let me know. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for being here. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Do all that stuff. I really appreciate it. That's it for me, guys. I'll see you guys later. I am out.